Hi there, I'm Lynn Branley of LWS Lynn Wardrobe Sews, and today I'm going to do my very first sew along with you for my very first Know Me pattern, number 2069. We're going to start with view A, which is this top, and then go on to the pants in a separate video. So let's get into it. For this first video, we are going to do view A, which is the top here of 2069. And a couple things to point out, I am the co-owner of Sewn Adaptive, and so I try to have all of my designs have an adaptive element to them. So this top is done in a high-low to be an adaptive length for wheelchair users. Here are the pieces you'll need. Number one, front, cut two. Number two, middle front, cut two. Number three, side front, cut two. Number four, back, cut one on the fold. Number five, middle back, cut two. Number six, side back, cut two. Number seven, flap, the pocket flap, cut four, cut two of interfacing. Number eight, yoke front, cut two. Number nine, yoke back, cut two. Number 10, collar, cut two on fold, cut interfacing one of them on fold. Number 11, Front facing, cut two, and cut two of interfacing. Number 12, front hem band, cut two, and cut two of interfacing. Number 13, back hem band, cut one on the fold, and cut one on the fold of interfacing. Number 14 is your sleeves, cut two. Number 15, continuous flap, cut two. And number 16 are your cuffs cut two and cut two of interfacing. The continuous flap is on the bias. Clip all your notches and transfer your markings. There are multiple weights of fabric suggested. I did the front cover pattern out of denim. So I used a substantial top stitching thread as a contrast color. If you're sewing on a home machine, you're going to want to use a denim needle. And I suggest also using a top stitching thread needle. You'll have more success that way. For this sew along, I'll be sewing mine out of chambray on an industrial machine. This is the top stitch thread I will use. The notions that you will need for this project are 10 5 8 buttons. On your front pieces, you're going to stay stitch the single notched edge, but I also suggest stay stitching the center front edge as well so that it stays straight as you work on your project. So I stay stitched the center front as well as the single notch side that the pattern calls for. So the front and the middle front single notch side together. 5 8 seam allowance both sides.
now stay stitch the free side of the middle fronts. Now right sides together, so side front number three to the edge of middle front number two. Five eight seam allowance, both sides. This is what your three front pieces sewn together look like. After I sew them together, I overlock the seam allowances and then I press those seams forward. Now I change my top stitching thread on my machine and I'm going to sew two rows on each seam. I'm going to start with a sixteenth of an inch from the seam all the way down on all the seams and then I'll come back and do another one at a quarter inch. Now that you've sewn together both sides, pieces one, two, and three, and done the two rows of top stitching with your top stitching thread down each of these seams. Now you're going to bring in your faux pocket flap that'll go right here. So take these pieces, sew them right sides together, turn it out, press, and do one row of top stitching around the edge. When top stitching, I use edge feet to do the narrower and then the row just after that. On the pockets, you only do one row and you do it a quarter inch, so I'm using the quarter inch edge foot. Now line up the faux pocket flaps that we just did, and you're going to baste across the top to hold them in place. Line them up with the markings that you did. Now you're going to take piece eight, which is the front yoke of the top. You're going to match the notches Pin it in place and sew 5 eighths on both sides. You'll press this yoke piece up and then you'll do the two rows of top stitching across the bottom of the yoke. You're going to top stitch two rows at the top of the front yoke, one at a sixteenth and another at a quarter. 
do both sides. Now you have your two front pieces assembled and top stitch. We're gonna put those aside. And now we're gonna start working on the back. This is the very center back piece, piece number four. You are gonna stay stitch on both sides. After you've done that stay stitching on piece number four, the back, then you're gonna take the middle back piece, number five, matching up the three notches on the sides of piece number four you're going to sew five eighths all the way down you're going to do it for the other side of the middle back number five down that seam you're going to press it open okay so you've now sewn the two middle back pieces number five to number four and you stay stitch the outer edge you press the seams towards the middle of the back and I like to overlock the edges of my seams you could do a flat felt seam if you were so inclined um, that would double as doing your top stitching but I overlock and then go back and top stitch so now we're going to add piece number six, which is your side back. Matching the notches on both sides. So you'll go down here, down here, overlock, press to the center. So now your back pieces are assembled, starting with four, five, and six. I pressed my seams open. I'm sorry, I, I pressed my seams, pressing them inward towards the center back. I overlocked the finish on the seam allowances. Then you're going to come back to the front right side and you're going to do your top stitching the pattern calls for just one row of top stitching i like to do two rows to sort of mimic denim even though i'm using the chambray so i'm going to do two rows 16th of an inch and then a quarter of inch on all of these seams so you can go do that now that you've completed all your top stitching across the back piece, you're going to take piece number nine, which is the back yoke, and you're going to take one of them and you're going to do right sides together, matching the notches. You're going to sew five eighths all the way across. So now you've sewn the back yoke to the right side of the back piece. Now you're going to turn it over and the back yoke facing, just like you did on the front, you're going to line up the notches. You're also going to press up the shoulder seams and then you're going to attach it right at the same place 
this will give you kind of a sandwich. Back yoke facing, back yoke, back. So now you're just going to base the back yoke facing to the seam allowance of the back and the back yoke. Now that you've based the yokes, the facing and the back yoke up, you're gonna base the raw seams on the side and at the neckline and then you're going to do your top stitching at the bottom of the yoke right there. You're leaving these open. This is the back facing with the seam pressed up. And this is the front yoke. Leave those part open, but you should have basted the sides and the neckline. Now I'm going to top stitch. Now we're going to take our finished front piece to our finished back piece and we're going to pin the shoulder seams matching the notches, keeping clear of the yoke facing that we've turned under and you're going to stitch 5 eighths across on both sides. Now that you've sewn the shoulder seams together, keeping the yoke facing clear, you're gonna fold that seam allowance to the inside and you're gonna slip stitch across the top and the same for the other side. So now that you've done the stay stitching, right sides together. You're going to line up the side seams matching the notches and you're going to do 5 eighths all the way down on both sides. So now I've sewn the side seams together. This is a time in my project making that I'll usually go try it on and see if it fits the way I want it to. Uh, pinning your center fronts, how they'll lap over. And then if you want it a little bit more fitted, you can take it out through this side seam. Um, so I try it on, pin out any that I need to take out, and then I sew it and then overlock the edges. And then the next thing I do is uh, you stay stitch the bottom edge of the entire garment and one little tip I guess is when whenever there's a curve in your fabric and things are off grain because there's a curve you always want to stay stitch curves. Um, curves will grow because they're off grain unless you stay stitch so things like necklines and this kind of a rounded hem um, has to be stay stitched so that it stays the same size until you're ready to put the facing um, or hem to it. So now we're going to assemble the hem band with piece 13, which is the back hem band, and piece 12, which is the front hem band. And you are going to match the markings of the front front to the back and your little marks that you put off the pattern and you're going to 
match up the notch and you're going to sew across here and then this gets pressed up and looks like that. So on both sides of the band, you're going to sew from the small dot all the way to the edge at 5 8 Do this on both sides. Now that you've put the front and back band pieces together, before you uh, line it up on the edge of the hemline to stitch down, you are going to turn the inside edge of this band a quarter of an inch and press all the way around the entire length of the assembled band so that this will enclose the raw edges on the wrong side when you top stitch. So the hem band to the bottom of the garment, 5 8 inch, all the way around. After you've stitched the band all the way around, I trim it down to about a quarter inch. Then you're going to go and edge stitch pushing the remaining seam allowance to the band, edge stitch all the way around, turn it back on itself, and press it. So now I have sewn the band on, I have edge stitched and pressed it to the wrong side of the garment. You're going to baste the center front edge of the band down on both sides and then I'm going to top stitch a sixteenth of an inch just inside the band all the way around the perimeter of the band at the hem. Now we're going to add the front facing to the front of our top on both sides. So you have these two pieces. Uh, there is a dot where the stitching will start and go out to the corner there and then all the way down. You, um, you can either finish the edge of the facing by turning it, pressing it, and stitching it down. Uh, I just overlocked it, but you'll want to clean up that edge before you apply it. You're also going to fold down the top shoulder edge um, and press 5 8 as well as at the bottom. And then we will line these pieces up matching that dot. And you will line it up all the way down and pin it there and you're going to stitch all the way up from the bottom to the to the corner and then to the dot and stop there five eighths
on both sides of this front facing, you're going to clip to that large dot at the top. You're going to clip to it, but not through the stitching. And then, like we did at the bottom band, we're going to edge stitch the seam allowance to the facing. So, a sixteenth of an inch, you'll edge stitch all the way down and to there. This part gets tricky at the corner you're probably good just to go up to the corner so that you turn it out. When you turn it wrong sides together, you'll press it and then you're gonna tack the bottom of the facing to the hem, hand stitched, as well as the shoulder seam the top of the facing hand stitch to the shoulder seam once it's turned to the wrong side and pressed. So now that you've slip stitched the top of your front facing to the shoulder seam and the same with the bottom of the front facing to the hem band you're going to stay stitch from the shoulder seam to right where you made that clip through all the layers so that we'll be ready to add the collar. Now we're going to assemble the collar. So you cut two of the collar pieces, number 10, the uninterfaced uh, piece, you're going to turn up a half inch and then right sides together, you're gonna lay them on top of one another, matching up the, the large dot that you marked on the pattern. And you'll line those all up. And then you will sew five eighths from the dot all the way around to the other side dot. Now you're gonna trim and all the way around the collar and the points. You're gonna turn it right side out and press it. And then you're gonna edge stitch as far as you can from here to the point. And then from about there probably all the way around and treat the other side, the other point, the same way. So now you edge stitch the seam allowance of the collar to the inner face collar piece. You'll go up the sides as far as you can go into the point, all the way down the long side of the collar, and then go up the other side of the point as far as you can go. So now you're going to pin the collar to the right side of the body of the garment at the neckline. You're going to match all the dots, the large dot that's, that was here at the front, the dot that is at the shoulder seams on both sides. I put one at the center. And then again over here at the large dot. If while sewing 
this doesn't match up or you you're worried that it doesn't match up you can you can clip to the stay stitching and and give yourself a little more room that way but it fits pretty good um, when you do your stitching so you'll stitch from the large dot basically to the large dot just keep that upper collar free so you're just going through the back part of the collar through the entire neckline So now my collar is sewn on on the back and the top part of the collar that we left free is now pinned down over that seam where we attached it. And now you can stitch in the ditch on this side, just barely catching this edge to close up that collar. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna top stitch with the contrast top stitch on my collar. So I'm gonna just do this all the way around. Now on to the sleeves. So you have the sleeve pieces, you cut two of 14, and you've put all the markings on your uh, self pieces. So we're gonna do a stitch line matching these uh, dots right here. So up to this point and straight down, up to this point and straight down, and then we're gonna cut to the point but not through the point. I've gone ahead for the continuous lap which will basically bound the edge and I have uh, folded it in a quarter inch and pressed it. So then we'll come back and we'll attach this and enclose that vent in the sleeve. So now I've done the stitching for the continuous lap and I am just going to cut right in the center, right up to that point, but not through it. And then I'm going to take the continuous lap and I'm going to start at this end and I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch to that point. You can open it up and then go down the other side. Because it's on the bias, it could kind of grow and stretch. So just be mindful of your easing as you go. And then you do the other side. So right sides together. Of 
quarter inch. All the way to the point and then you're gonna flip it around I like to pull that kind of straight back so it kind of has it's like you're sewing a straight line but you're going over that point And then this gets pressed, seam allowance gets pressed towards it, then you wrap it around and you stitch in the ditch all the way down. So at the top of the, the cap of the sleeve, we're going to make these pleats to either side of the center point. And the way we do that in looking at the pattern piece is you create pleats taking the solid line and folding it like that. And that lines up with the dotted line. So solid line to dotted line. And you can see the pleats go this way on one side of the sleeve, on the front side of the sleeve, and then the opposite way on the other side of the sleeve. I'm sorry, on the back side of the sleeve. They went this way, and on this side, they go the opposite way. Uh, one thing I like to do, just to make this all easier, is I'll do a little clip. So the dotted line for the size, solid line for the size, dotted dotted line, solid line, all the way up a little clip so I know where those little folds go. Just little, you know, quarter or less. Just enough so that you can see it and make it easier. Then you pin those in place and then you'll baste over all of that pleating. Then you'll do an, uh, an easing stitch or a gathering stitch that you can then pull if you need to ease more out of the cap. Um, so I've gone and done one of those rows. Typically in the patterns they do two rows. It's kind of what you're comfortable with with easing. Um, but so you see I have the basting stitch and then I have the gathering stitch just after it uh, that goes between uh, the dots that were on the pattern there, there, and there. Um, and you can see that the, then the notches are here. Um, so once I'm ready to ease that, or I've done all those stitches, I didn't see it. We're at step 35 on the pattern. Um, I typically now will close the underarm seam, so 5 eighths, matching the notches, 5 eighths. Um, you can overlock that to clean that up. You can press that open because then you're going to do two rows of gathering stitches from point here where the dot was and point here. So two rows of stitches so that you can gather this up before you add it to the cuff. So pin out your pleating, baste those pleats in place, do two rows of the gathering stitch, right sides together, sew your sleeve seam together at 5 eighths inch, and then go and do the two rows of gathering stitches on the bottom edge. So at the bottom edge, of your sleeve, you're gonna 
so two rows of gathering stitches all the way around between the continuous lap. And you're going to do these two gathering rows just to the right of your, what will be your stitch line at 5 eighths. You're going to draw up these gathering stitches all the way around until the finished circumference is the length of your cuff minus the seam allowance. Now you're going to take your cuff pieces you should have done all the markings on them and on the unnotched side. So the notch side is here. On the unnotched side, you're going to fold it up 5 eighths and press it. And then with the gathered bottom edge of the sleeve that you just did, you're going to pin the cuff at those dots, adjusting the gathers all the way around, and you're going to sew 5 eighths through the edge of the cuff, through the gathers, all the way around. Now you're going to fold the cuff back up right sides together on both ends. Having the gathering and the seam allowance face down. So you'll line those up. And you're going to sew right along the edge of the continuous lap. And you're going to do it on this side, and then you'll turn it right side out. So now I've sewn the ends, I've trimmed them down, turned it right side out. This is the inside. And now I'm gonna top stitch with my contrast top stitch thread and I'm gonna go all the way around the perimeter and towards the gathers, I'm gonna make sure that I just catch the edge of the cuff on the inside as I go around the edge of the gathers.
Now you're going to set the sleeve in. So right sides together, you put your sleeve through the armhole, matching up the underarm seams, the notches, and the dots that you marked. You'll manipulate your easing if need be. And then you're going to sew all the way around through both layers for both sleeves. So now I'll take this to my overlocker and I'll just overlock all of this since the chambray frays so much. So a quick location change. So now the top is done, basically. The only thing left to do is to mark your buttonholes, do your buttonholes, and then sew on your buttons. You will do six buttons on the front. You will do buttonholes and buttons on the flaps, as well as on your cuffs. One little tip, I like to mark my apex. So I try on the garment and I mark on the front uh, where the buttonholes will go the fullest part of my bust so that that has a button placement for sure. And then I gauge the placement of all the other buttons from that point evenly so that, you know, when I have the garment on and it's closed at that fullest point, there is a button. So I have this nifty tool that I use that automatically spaces everything evenly and I just do my button mark and then do my button holes all the way down. This is the version of the top that's on the front of the envelope of the pattern um, which I did out of denim and I wanted to point out a couple things that I did differently from what I just did in the sew along. Because it's denim I wanted to have that elevated denim jacket look, like I said at the beginning of the video. So I actually purchased raw denim from Pacific Blue Denim here in Los Angeles. And I made my garment uh, unwashed. So, so I used the raw denim and I did a size that I knew would be slightly bigger before washing and then washing would be the fit that I want. I'm gonna add a link. My business partner, Alex, has done a tutorial on how to determine shrinkage, uh, especially on denim. And I wanted to do it this way because with uh, denim apparel, the reason why denim looks the way it does versus when you see things sewn, you know, um, with patterns typically, sewn denim, the wash is what makes the denim look worn and look like ready-to-made apparel. A lot of times we'll, we'll buy denim, we'll wash it, we'll make the garment, and it doesn't have that look of wear that we want, and that's the difference. Um, having it professionally washed at a wash house is my go-to and what I would recommend um, but you have to be able to understand shrinkage after sewing to make sure and get the correct fit. So I did. I sewed my garment with raw denim and then had it professionally washed. Um, the other thing is the buttonholes on the pattern. Because it's more of a top if you're not using denim 
and you're using like the chambray like I use, your buttonholes are going to go long ways like a shirt placket would. And you don't, you wouldn't use keyhole, you just use regular buttons. I have a keyhole machine at our shop. So I did keyhole buttons to mimic again a denim jacket. I also added top stitching, top stitching my facing from that point all the way up to the shoulder. Again, mimicking what a denim jacket would have versus the chambray look, which is more of a top.